All right, good morning, everyone. Good morning. I am uh, Councilmember Salamanca. I am the chair of this committee. I would like to welcome my esteemed colleagues who are here. We have Councilmember Barron, Constantinides, Deutsch, Cherkalos, King, Kuhl, Lansman, Reynoso, Torres, Gredenchik, Chair Adams, Diaz, Chair Moya, and Rivera. I want to thank Chair Moya, Chair Adams, and Chair Kalos for their work on our land use subcommittees. Today, we will be voting on a number of items referred out of our planning and zoning subcommittees. We'll be voting to approve LU 102, Berrien Gardens application for property located at 1479 to 1497 St. Mark's Avenue in Councilmember Ampre Samuels District in Brooklyn. In this application, HPD seeks approval of a new 40-year tax exemption pursuant to Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law for existing buildings with 77 dwelling units for low-income seniors eligible for Section 8 vouchers. There is a project rental assistance contract in place. The project currently has outstanding tax liens and the owner has entered into a payment plan. The new Article 11 tax exemption will facilitate the resolution of the liens for which HUD will pay the interest and approval of this application will also establish a new regulatory agreement ensuring affordability until 2058. We will also vote to approve LU 104, the Culver L Phase 1 for properties located on 37th Street between 12th and 13th Avenue in Councilmember Landers District in Brooklyn. HPD seeks a retroactive, retroactive Article 11 tax exemption for taxes occurred in the past six years during the construction phase. These, excuse me, I'm sorry, thank you. These home ownership units will be affordable to homeowners with income ranging from 80% to 100% of AMI. After developers transfer the properties to individual homeowners free and clear of the, prop of the prior taxes, an Urban Development Action Area Project, UDAP, tax exemption pursuant to Article 16 of the General Municipal Law will go in effect prospe prospectively. We will vote to approve OU 105, the NIHOP Van Bereen Green application for properties located on seven blocks in Councilmember Carnegie's district in Brooklyn. HPD seeks amendments to a previously approved UDAP in order to avoid punitive taxes being imposed on the, fu on the future homeowners of 10 to family homes. A change to the project will allow HPD to reduce the land debt, bringing the cumulative value of the subsidies below a level that incurs the so-called mansion tax. The future homeowners will have incomes between 80 and 130 of AMI. We will vote to approve OU 106, the 501 West 51st Street application for properties in Speaker Johnson's district in Manhattan. HPD seeks a new Article 11 tax exemption for a term of 40 years for a fully occupied building with 22 residential units. Some tenants were relocated during the original rehabilitation and have returned to the building, and the rest of the rehab units were mar marketed to families with incomes of 80% of AMI. The, the tax exemption will be retroactive to 2010 since the building has existing tax arrears. We will also vote to approve LU 103 Hudson Pierce 2 for properties in Councilmember Le Levine's district in Manhattan. A new partial Article 11 tax exemption is sought for two family occupied buildings with 83 units located at 1626 and 1640 Amsterdam Avenue. There is an existing Article 5 tax exemption which will be terminated and replaced with the Article 11. This will be extended affordability as the Article 5 tax exemption expires in 2024. All units will remain income restricted at 50% of AMI with tenants paying 30% of their income as rent. We will also be voting to approve LU81, the ANCP 107 West 105th Street application. The application by HPD is for a UDAP approval, as well as a 40-year Article 11 tax exemption to facilitate the renovation of two partially occupied city-owned residential buildings in Councilmember Levine's district in Manhattan. After the renovation, current tenants will have the opportunity to purchase these units for $2,500, and vacant units will be sold to families earning between 97 and 110 of AMI. From our sub from our zoning subcommittee, we'll be voting to approve LU83, the 280 Richards Street Waterfront application in Councilmember Menchaca's district in the Brooklyn. The applicant, the Thor 280 Richards Street LLC, seeks approval of an authorization to modify requirements for the minimum dimensions and areas of waterfront public access and visual corridor in connection with the development of a five-story commercial building along the Erie Basin in Red Hook, Brooklyn. A public walkway along the waterfront will be provided as part of this development. We will vote to approve LU70, an application for a 
revocable consent to operate an undisclosed sidewalk cafe at Cafe Tabu in Councilmember Rodriguez District in Manhattan. We will be voting to modify LU84 and the 45 Broad Street Special Permit for property, the Special Law Manhattan District and Councilmember Chin's District. The Special Permit would allow 3.0 FAR of bonus floor area to be used in an 80-story mixed-use building in connection with major improvements to the subway system, including the provision of two new elevators. A modifications will add signage at the street level indicating that the sub southbound elevator is for egress only. Our modifications will also specify the location of the bonus floor area to ensure that this bonus floor area is not occupied until certain subway improvements are complete. We will also make clear that a corn shell TCO will not permit any type of occupancy and make technical changes, making it easier to understand which subway improvements are required. We will be voting to approve the LU85, the Hudson Boulevard, and Park Tax Amendment, which affect properties in special Hudson Yards District and Speaker Johnson's District in Manhattan. While phase one of the Hudson Boulevard and Park was acquired and built out by the city and opened to the public in 2015, the land comprising phase two still remains in private ownership. This text amendment proposed by the Department of City Planning would make technical changes to the zoning text to facilitate the private development of phase two of the Hudson Boulevard Park for use by the public. We will be voting to approve LUs 86 through 88, the Willow Avenue rezoning for property in my district in the Bronx, approval of these applications for a zoning map change to permit residential use, a zoning text amendment to designate the area as a mandatory inclusionary housing area subject to MIH option one, and an article 11 tax exemption will permit the redevelopment of the application applicants site into an eight-story mixed-use building with 134 residential units, 100%, which will be affordable. We will be voting to file the proposed revocable consent for five milestone to operate an unenclosed sidewalk cafe at 1640 Sex, uh, 2nd Avenue, Manhattan, in Councilmember Kalos District, because it has been withdrawn. Now, are there any questions or remarks from members of the committee? Uh, I just want to point out um, the 11, 111 Willow Avenue project that's in my district. Um, I know that I was working with the Atmark Group, Altmark Group. Um, I know we changed this project around tremendously, and I just want to thank you for working with me. Um, as part of this project, it's 100% affordable. We went deeper in affordability, and this is the third project in a row uh, that we'll be voting where there has been a 15% homeless set aside. So I want to thank you uh, for working with me. All right, so now I will call a vote in accordance with recommendations of the subcommittees and the local members to approve the modifications that have been described, LU84, and to approve LU70, 81, 83, 85, 86, 87, 88, 102, 103, 104, 105, and 106, and to file LU82. Will the clerk please call the roll? William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote, committee on land use, Chair Salamanca. Aye, on all. Barron. Permission to explain my vote? Yes, Councilmember Barron. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate the fact that LU 86, 87, and 88 have 50% going down for the uh, provision for homeless. I don't think the trade off should be that we're pushing up the upper realms to 120% of AMI. In this body, we love to say affordable, but of course, it's always affordable to whom? And when we and bring in housing at the levels that do not match the persons who are presently living there. We're pushing out a segment of people. We're not providing them with the opportunity to uh, be eligible. So with that, I vote aye with the exception of 86, 87, and 88, on which I vote no. Thank you. I just uh, want to make a comment. I appreciate that, Council Member Barron. Um, as you know, I am one of the leading pioneers in affordable housing. You and I, we, got this, a race yes, we share here. that. So this uh, is going to put me a little ahead of you because I don't have any. I don't know about 20. that, but um, <laughs> just just want to point out that yes. this um, this project, when they originally came, they were as deep as 130 percent AMI. Um, I got them below that. I got them to about 110. All my projects, I believe, in mixed income because I do have working families in my district, and I don't want to displace them either. 
Um, but there was a give and take that I needed to give if I wanted to get that 15% homeless set aside. And in order to get that 15% homeless set aside, I needed to give a few units at a little higher AMI. And I was willing to negotiate that so that I can bring back homeless families that are in the shelter and are ready for independent living back to their communities. I appreciate that and I respect that. Thank you. Konstantinidis. I and all. Deutsch. Uh, I and all, I just want to propose that whenever we have two, conse two consecutive intermissions, we should allow Council Member uh, Adams to sing for us. I and all. Kalos. Permission to explain my vote? Chair Kalos. I want to uh, thank the uh, subcommittee on planning members for uh, uh, working with us, asking uh, tough questions at the hearings, and uh, really getting to the bottom of the affordable housing that we're doing, how much we're spending, and uh, whether we can do better for our residents. And uh, I think it's taken a little bit longer, but I think we've been able to do a lot. And I think it's been recognized by the amount of affordable housing we're seeing and the lower rates. I, I want to thank our land use chair, who's personally gotten involved in a number of those situations to get affordable affordability rates uh, to where they can. I also want to thank the uh, zoning chair, uh, Moya, for working with me. And uh, though uh, the application's withdrawn, I'm working with him and the uh, restaurant and bar in question to uh, work with the community and be a positive for the community so that uh, we can hopefully come back later this summer and uh, support small businesses. Thank you. King. Uh, sorry, I vote aye. <laughs> Thank you. Councilmember um, King. Um, permission to explain my vote? Uh, Councilmember King to explain his vote. Uh, I'm voting aye on all, but I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you who have done the work and real smart uh, putting together land use projects that respect our neighborhoods and figuring out, as Councilmember Kayla said to do, with we have to withdraw because it doesn't make sense that we're being responsible in the work that we're doing here. So I thank us for not just pushing us up through because someone on the outside says we should too. So thank you all and congratulations on that vote aye. Cool. I don't know. Lanceman. Uh, Reynoso. To no surprise, the Bronx continues to build affordable housing. I want to thank Chair for his continued effort um, and hope that we can have other boroughs match the vigor by which you work to get as much affordable housing at the lowest rate. And of course, I vote I know. Torres. I vote aye. Traeger. With great congratulations to Chair Salamanca for showing extraordinary, consistent leadership. I proudly vote aye. Gordinchik. Permission to uh, not explain my vote, but just to make a little statement. Council Member Gredenchik. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I am voting aye on all, but I do want to recognize that we have been joined um, by students from PSIS 295Q, which is on Jamaica Avenue in the Great Borough of Queens. It's the only part of Jamaica Avenue that I have that is south of Jamaica. The only part of my district goes south, and they built a beautiful school there. The school is now 10 years old. Um, we are joined by young people from the National Honor Society and from the Social Awareness Club, which I have had the honor of addressing. Uh, it's a great school. I've been working steadily with their principal, Ms. Lavigny Jones, over the years. And I just want to welcome them to City Hall today. And I believe uh, for all of them, it is their first visit to our great City Hall. So welcome to all of you. It's good to see you. Um, and uh, you still have some more school left, but take July and August off. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Adams. Permission to comment. Chair Adams. Yes. Thank you, Chair. I, too, would like to welcome our students today and our educators today. Uh, I represent District 28, which Jamaica is in uh, District 28. So I, too, um, want to say welcome to City Hall. This is the People's House, your house. Feel free to come anytime and often. We like to see you here. With that, I'd like to congratulate my colleagues for this legislation that is needed, especially in the area of affordable housing, that which so many of us continue to fight for in our districts and for the city of New York. I also vote aye and all. Diaz. 
Hajoro. Moya. Uh, I just want to congratulate the chair on uh, the wonderful work that you've done to uh, bring this project home and uh, bring affordability to uh, the community that you represent. Uh, you continue to do a great job, and I will be voting aye on all. Rivera. All items on today's land use agenda have been adopted by a vote of 16 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, with land use items 86, 87, and 88 being adopted by the committee, 15 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. All right, I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, council, and land use staff for attending today's hearing. We'll leave the roll open for 10 minutes. Thank you. <laughs>